To understand a changing climate, scientists need sophisticated tools. So how do you develop advanced technologies to study essential aspects of the climate during a global pandemic? With teams socially distant, they're working from spare bedrooms and at tables in their backyard. It's tough. It's not easy to uh, turn a wrench from home, but uh, you know. But we also work with some very clever and very um, innovative people who um, have figured out methodologies to actually, like you know, to test things from really from home, like remotely. So uh, the longer we're we're you know stuck at home and the itchier we are to get back to work, uh, the more creative we, we can get about finding ways to, to perform those tests. So we have a electrical ground support equipment that we hook up to the networks, the computer networks that got her, and we VPN into them, and we can actually turn on power supplies and, and power up the components from home. What they're powering up is this. It's the spacecraft that headlines NASA's mission called PACE. From orbit, it will study Earth's oceans, biogeochemistry, ecology, the carbon cycle, aerosols, and clouds. PACE is a climate change observatory. And climate change continues even during the pandemic. So the mission's research goals can't wait. But that said... Progress is being made, but not in the way one typically thinks about construction of a uh, satellite observatory. The, the technological advances are great, and they really do help us. Uh, but they're still not as good as a face-to-face. -face. It's, it's been lovely being home with my wife and my daughter. I can't complain about that. but. Uh, it's not that it's not the same as getting out to work and seeing everybody. There's going to be, you know, probably a meaningful cultural shift in how a project of the size, you know, somewhere between 400 and 500 people right now, um, you know, learn how to interact with each other going forward. I don't think meetings will be structured the same way, and that might actually make us more productive. There's that, you know, serendipity that has disappeared, and and also the, you know, the. Everything has to be planned ahead of time. Nothing beats the the, the personal interaction, um, especially when you're having having to to describe the type of engineering you know features that we're that we're talking about. It's it's really hard sometimes to to point out small pins that we're you know that that we're referring to. We really have to be, you know, face to face to show yeah. you, no, I'm talking about this specific one. Virtual meetings do not take over the, you know, the importance of that. I think that, you know, me and my, my co-lead have been equally as productive because we can do absolutely 100% of our work remotely. Um, and I think that moving forward, it's going to it's going to lend to, you know, instead of just working from remotely one day a week, maybe I try to do two days a week um, because it is really working out well. Eventually, we will come to a point where we need to get back in there and put things together with the hardware. The team has done, I would say, uh, a Herculean effort. There is a large aspect of a mission that is more than just the hands-on labor, right? So there's a lot of people that are doing that, um, but there's also a lot of people that have to do paperwork. Um, you know, drawings, work orders, procedures, uh, software development, access to these computer systems for, for testing. It's just hard, like emotionally, mentally. It's, this is a difficult thing to overcome. True, space flight and scientific research are all about teamwork. And this is a tough time to be part of a team. But this team knows why this mission matters so much. The biggest uncertainty in our future is our climate. Understanding the ocean that controls large percentage of the climate climate behavior is crucial, and that's that's what PACE is going to bring us: better understanding of ocean that controls the climate that is pretty much our house. And that's why, pandemic or no pandemic, this team isn't slowing down. I think it's very challenging to make any of these people stop work. Right? It's it's just it's so it goes so much against our natural desire to just want to build, want to achieve, you know, want to innovate. And I mean, we're creative people. That's, that's why we work at NASA, right? 